Hey guys, today I have another opening guide for you. We're going to be looking at the defense, which is knight f3 and now knight to c6. And this goes by the name the Black Mustang. We'll be diving into all of the main ideas and main lines that you should be familiar if you're going to play this line. Now, although this move knight to c6 is definitely far less common than knight f6 or d5, it actually still holds a lot of power, and there's been many great players who have played it. Hikaru Nakamura has uh, quite a lot of games in this line, Kramnik as well. So there definitely is some great ideas, and even at the top level, people do still uh, use this line. So what is the idea with this move, knight to c6? Well, black is trying to get more control over e5. And so a common and typical idea is maybe if they go e4, then you play simply e5, and we actually just transpose into the, the normal opening e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6. And here, I mean, white can continue, of course, in a, a million different ways, the scotch, for example. Um, and, and you need to know how to, how to play these uh, if you're going to be playing this move knight to c6. Um, but this is typically totally fine for black. I mean, it's one of the most common uh, openings for both players, so you have great chances here. So that's one definite uh, transformation that can happen in the position. But now, one of the powerful things is if they play g3, and typically with the white pieces, knight f3, g3, and bishop g2 are the most automatic moves that you play if you're going for the ready system. Um, but if they do go for this, well, then you can play e5. And because they don't have a pawn here on e4, um, the threat of e4 for yourself is actually quite uh, powerful. So for example, bishop to g2, if they just continue like they normally do in this opening, well, suddenly e4 and you already have a great edge in the game. Their knight actually, for the most part, has to retreat. I mean, we can look at what happens if they go to h4, which is the only other safe square. Here, there's another, uh, a, no a number of options. You can try g5 immediately, going a little crazy and then even d5, hitting the knight. Um, even f5 here, the engine showed, is quite powerful, um, simply grabbing an enormous uh, amount of space on both the center and the king side, and then going to develop your pieces behind your pawns, and you're always, always going to have these ideas of f4 and d4 uh, at your fingertips, and white has to be incredibly careful to not just get blown off the board here. So if you want to take it this way, that is fine. But instead of g5, you don't you don't really have much of a hurry. You can also just play d5 here, controlling f5, and now threatening g5 a little more seriously. It's a super hard threat uh, to, to actually uh, get, get away from for white because the knight really needs a safe square and it doesn't really have one. I mean, okay, you can undevelop the bishop, but that's kind of ridiculous. So the engine showed d3 as the best try, but this is typically pretty good. G5 here, they take, and white tries to get some counterplay. But if you put this move H3, then you're doing perfectly fine here because the bishop is getting uh, harassed on, on the king side. The bishop has to move into a much more vulnerable square in the center. And you've carved that, a lot of space, especially on these light squares on the king side. Now you can just move your knight and you have a great game here. I mean, all of your pieces have incredible ease getting into the game um, and white you know might have a bit more trouble especially looking at this bishop it's kind of blocking this pawn and also it's a little misplaced it can be a target in the future especially with ideas of f5 for example so this is definitely um, what would happen if the knight hops into the rim into the side of the board so the knight has to retreat and here there's not much analysis that i have to do after you play d5 you secure the center you're you're super super happy here i mean you have all the space you you're not even lacking in development or material there's no compensation white has for this space you have in the center it's already looking like black is playing for a win here and so what should white do because we already looked at these more normal setups but we established that this is quite passive because of this idea of e5 so instead white has to act quite precisely from the opening they have to play the move d4 here and the, the point is simply stopping e5. Now, from here, you have to play the move d5, not allowing the move d5 from white, which would allow white to just grab an enormous amount of space in the center. And now after the move c4, we can see incredible resemblance to the Chagorin defense. So if you're familiar with that defense 
from the black pieces, then this is going to be very easy to play um, for you. If not, not to worry, it's not the craziest opening with the most amount of theory. It's actually rather simple. The one thing you do need to remember, you don't want to go e6 here, which is the more typical uh, response. I mean, you can, it is a move, uh, but I recommend not to because, well, it's a little hard for you to get good counterplay in this position because the typical ideas of either c5 or c6 to stay solid or go for the center don't work here, of course, because your knight is on the c file. Uh, and so rather to get some counterplay, I would recommend the move bishop g4, activating your bishop, which is something you rarely do um, in other queens, gambits, queen pawn openings. Um, and the point is typically they have these ideas of queen b3 always, but queen b3 is much less powerful in these situations when your knight is developed um, for a number of reasons. First of all, if they were to ever take the pawn here, Instead of the knight being on b8, where you would have to spend a move moving it away, you can immediately employ ideas of rook b8 and get play on the b file. So you can imagine in some positions that being useful. Secondarily, the knight is incredibly powerful in the center. So if their queen ever gets dragged away from the center, they might have some big problems on d4. For example, taking here is simply better for white or for black. Um, if they were to take the pawn here, you can simply take on d4, and of course, this is crushing. And very similarly, if they were to take the bishop with the queen, same thing. So you have a much better play and much more counterattacking possibilities when your knight is on c6 when it comes to the center, which is why you can afford to play this move bishop g4 rather than keeping your bishop locked behind your pawns. So that's a key thing to remember. Now, what happens after bishop g4? Well, they have a number of options, but knight c3, of course, seems rather natural, more, more pressure on this pawn, but now you go e6. Your bishop is out, e6 is super solid. Developing the bishop next, um, and specifically b4, is a great square for the bishop going extra aggressive. Um, and I mean, you can see that black is getting great play in this sort of position. Um, you can see the bishops are super nicely placed, same with the knight. There's already some ideas of e5 at the right moment. Um, after bishop d3, you can continue knight f6. Here, I think e5 is also possible, um, and you can explore this for yourself, especially with the huge threat of e4, because of not only the fork, but also the pin. Um, so that would have been possible, but knight f6 is also fine, just developing, getting ready to castle. And after you castle, the ideas in this position are quite simple. Um, you eventually try to push for this e pawn push. Another thing you can do is play on the queen side. You can see the pawns here aiming towards the queen side. So often you have queen side play in these sort of positions. So you can try to attack on the queen side with your pawns. A third thing you can do is actually king side play. And the way that I would recommend doing that is taking the knight, first of all, giving yourself more control over e4. And after they take, knight e4. Notice taking here doesn't really work. Um, firstly, there's some tactical ideas in relation to this pin. Maybe, I mean, d5 or h3 can help white in this position, but even here you can just take, take, and take with the attack on the rook. The only thing to be careful of is not to blunder checkmate here, so simply g6 maybe, and not being really worried about these dark square weaknesses because uh, you can always block up this diagonal with f6. Um, and so that is one thing to keep in mind, this idea of if they take, you can take back. But also another thing to note, even if the tactical reasons did not exist here in a different position, let's say your bishop is not here or their queen is not uh, allowing you to pin their knight, this structure is not even that bad for you. You can play f5, solidify your center, and then get great access over to their king. And this is also similar to what happens if they don't take. So you can imagine if they play bishop e2 trying to get rid of this pin, f5 comes. And in both of these lines, the rook enters, the queen can enter as well, of course, uh, with the idea that the knight at some point will be gone from here. This knight is incredibly powerful. Your center is also a very critical point. Your center is super solid here. They don't have a great way to make uh, much play here. And, you know, black has incredible attacking possibilities here. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I know the ready is more of an offbeat opening, and I think a lot of people struggle playing against it because 
Well, I mean, if they play e4, you have some theoretical move. You can play the Sicilian, you can play the Karo, you can just play e5. You have some idea. Same thing with d4. But when they play knight to f3, it's not something that you necessarily studied. So it's a little harder sometimes to play against it. But hopefully this video offered this very creative and nice idea with knight to c6, either going for e5 and e4 if they allow it, or alternatively d5 and the line that I just looked at. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. Subscribe if you're new around here. Like this video if you enjoyed it. And I will see you next time. Peace out.